I'm Drawing with Mr. S, and welcome to my channel. Uh, the original idea for this video is to take three different characters and make them a little bit more spookier, make them a little bit more monstrous, ghoulish, but that's not what ended up happening. Um, in all honesty, this is more of me just drawing things in my own style, and honestly, I really hope you guys enjoy. All right, so first up is the character Candelavra from My Singing Monsters. Um, my wife and I ended up getting into My Singing Monsters during the summer, um, but I'm going to be honest, I quickly kind of burnt out through it after like a month, uh, so I'd no longer play it, but I thought some of the characters in there were really cool to look at, um, and one of them was Candelavra, and I think this kind of character was really fun to draw, only because it got to challenge me to... Um, Try to draw some more fire elements. I've done fire a few times on this channel. Some were more successful than others. I think this is kind of one of those spots where I feel like it looks good. Uh, kind of like magical fire just because of the colors I chose at the end. Um, but I don't know. I'll let you guys kind of figure that part out. Um, I went through a bunch of different poses um, in this uh, sketching phase. Uh, this one took me a while because I just wasn't settling on anything. Um, I really like the one that's probably on screen right now where Candelavra has two hands up with two gauntlets and one hand has a fireball and the other one doesn't. Um, but then I think I completely changed the arm on that right hand side. It's on our left. Um, and then I changed the position of the legs a few times because I just wasn't satisfied with um, trying to see if this was a dynamic pose, if it was a pose that was possible for this um, one-legged creature to be able to stand on. So I was kind of going through a whole bunch of things before I settled on a design that I could um, finally ink and then kind of go forward with the, the process. Um, but I think ultimately I, I really enjoyed this process of trying to design her in my um, in kind of like my style. Um, I kind of gave her some shark fins uh, or like some fins at the hips because um, that's how I registered the, the hips that she has in, in uh, the image, right, for the reference photo. Um, and I thought it would just make it a little bit scarier, make it a little bit more interesting because, again, the original idea was to make it horrific, like spooky, that sort of thing. Um, flame aspect in the uh, right hand, um, I thought it was interesting because there was a few times where I'm like, oh, man, that looked really good please don't keep going and don't change that fire. And all I did was continuously change the fire because I was unsatisfied. That just might be the artist in me that I'm just like, I just don't know if this looks all right. And I'm just going to keep changing it until I feel satisfied. Um, but ultimately, I kind of had fun with her. Um, I try to make the face a little bit more um, ghouly, um, almost as if it was like a ghastly from Pokemon, right? So instead of, you know, just having the gas ball, it's a fireball with eyes coming out in the mouth. Um, I went more painterly on that one than I normally do. Um, but I really hope you guys enjoy the results. Let me know what you think about Candelavra. All right, guys. So uh, I made a big goof on this one. Um, I forgot to hit the record button on my Eclipse Studio Paint. Uh, so normally there's like a time lapse button that you hit under file and I completely forgot to do it. Um, so right here on screen is my sketch of Vox. Um, he's a character from Has Been Hotel and I just wanted to, um, again, the, the prompt was for myself to redesign him to be more monstrous. But honestly, I just redesigned him in my own style. Uh, I, I actually took some liberties of removing some things, but I kept the color palette about the same. Um, so here's his sketch phase, right? So I, I did it all. I kind of figured him out. I thought the head was too small uh, after I designed it. So when I went to the line work phase, um, I actually decided to keep most of the lines where they were except for the head. I ended up uh, putting the head on a different angle. Okay, and so that was just one subtle difference that I made um, to it. But I think it was a it was a nice change that actually made the picture better, made the sketch better, um, just looking at that pose the way it was. And of course, I made it to the coloring phase before I realized that you know what I didn't. <laughs> I still wasn't recording. So uh, so here's the colored version of Vox. Um, but this is actually where the time lapse picks up from. Um, honestly, it, it's going to pick up from where I start putting in the stripes on his vest and on his shirt. Um, and then we'll kind of go uh, discuss a little bit about um, the textures from there. All right. So like I said, so 
put in the colors. I was color picking the whole way through. Here's the stripes, right? Here, here I am putting in some textures. I don't know why I decided on a vest and like a long sleeve shirt under the vest, but that's the route I went. Um, I put in the textures um, across his clothes, across the TV. Um, I had a lot of fun um, when I get to the rendering portion of his face where I ended up trying to show like uh, the, the reflection on his face um, and also kind of putting a crack on his screen um, was a real fun like um, kind of uh, detail to add into him because um, I thought that was really cool. Um, but yeah, I, I think this one, it's not necessarily my favorite in the batch, but I did feel like um, I really liked the pose in it and I felt like I actually drew the hands really well, uh, which is something that it's either a hit or a miss for me. Um, but I felt like they were good and I felt like just looking at him, he was very proportionate the whole way through. Um, he usually have a tendency of making like really big heads or big hands or big feet. And then everything else just kind of figures, figures its way out proportionately. Right. Um, but ultimately I had fun with this one. Hope you, uh, really like this box design that I came up with. All right, and for my last piece, I decided to go with Dragapult. Uh, he's one of my favorite Pokemon. He's a ghost. He's a dragon. The ghost aspect definitely would have fit out really well if I was trying to make these things more horrific or horrifying. Um, but I don't know. Uh, I think he just looks really cool. I don't think he's more monstrous at all. Um, so he ends up having like, you know, he has those little horns or those little spots where like uh, the drapey shoot out of. Um, but I end up getting rid of those because um, I just struggled so hard. So I was like, you know what? Let's just completely remove it and let's just say this is what he looks like in the redesign, right? Um, I had different ideas for like the drapey spirits that he could shoot out. Um, I thought the original ideas were really cool. Um, but I actually don't even end up with them. I end up with like some floating spheres um, of some sort, which, you know, I, I don't know if it's more of a cop out, but I, I wish I had gone with my original um, intent, my original thoughts of like these birdish dragon head like torpedoes. I think it would have been really cool. Um, and then when I was going into the colors, I, I, I knew immediately I wanted the tail to uh, fizzle out and fade out. Um, it's also the reason why I got rid of the uh, legs in the original Dreepy design, or the uh, sorry, not Dreepy, Dracopult design. Um, so, but I think it came out pretty good. Um, I actually enjoyed the background on this one. Um, for most of these backgrounds, um, especially this one, um, I've been using some like asset brushes, right? So you, you can totally tell. Like um, I put in some, I used a foliage brush, and then I used some um, grass brushes. Um, and then some cloud brushes. And then after that, I just kind of threw a gradient in the background, which I thought was kind of cool because it went from a pink, orangey, blue, purple kind of textures or colors, right? Um, and, and I thought the colors all blended well. I think the angle of it looks really nice um, as if we were like kind of on the ground with a camera kind of shooting upward um, from like an ant's eye view or a worm's eye view, I guess, in this case. Um, I, I had a lot of fun with this design. Um, and I think out of all three, I thought this one was my favorite just because composition worked really nicely. Um, but go ahead. Let me know in the comments down below which one was your favorite. All right, guys. Well, I hope you enjoyed this episode. Um, if you did, show this video some love. And if you have some ideas for future videos, go ahead and comment those down below. Um, if you missed your opportunity to submit in a piece for my first community redraw, no worries. I got my second one still in effect and it's due date is November 7th. So there's definitely enough time for that. I'm going to post it right here for the October community redraw. I'd like you to design your very own horror monster. The scarier, the better provide at least one headshot, one full body shot, provide a name for your horror monster and a description of your monster. So this way I get a good idea about your character. And provide some lore for your monster. I really want to know what it is, and I'd like to be able to utilize some of your lore into my story. The deadline, again, is November 7th, and you can submit in your art piece via email to dwmsredraws at gmail.com. That is dwmsredraws at gmail.com. And as always, guys, I'm Drawing with Mr. S, and I'll see you all in the next video. Y'all have a good one. Take care. Bye-bye.